Bullpens are at the center of pitching development. If you want to improve your performance, you need to be focusing on the right things. So today I want to show you five possible bullpen categories you can implement. So let's begin with number one, pitch design. If you are in need of developing a new pitch or fine tuning a current one, a pitch design session is probably what you need. Ideally, you would have TrackMan or Rapsodo at the least, but we can definitely make do if we simply just use dot balls. Before the bullpen starts, you should have a goal and a couple of ideas of what you want to try. So when we're doing this, we want to be answering questions like, what movement are we looking for? What is the specific number if we do have access to TrackMan? What grips and cues are we going to try? And then having a plan will just save you so much more time during the session to make it more productive rather than scrambling during the session trying to figure out what you want to try and what movement or really anything else about the bullpen of what you're trying to accomplish. When we're throwing these, we want to aim for around 40% of your pitches to be the new pitch. You want to make sure it isn't all you're throwing, but you also need a substantial amount of reps to push the needle forward. And just a simple plug, if you are needing more help with pitch design, I did just come out with a new course called Pitch Design U that you can check out. Moving on to number two, mechanics. Especially at the start of a bullpen or during the off season, you might need to focus on something mechanical. There's a few ways to go about this. The first way that I would suggest, um, this is more of an intensive way to do it, is to video record yourself throwing your pen and stop every couple of throws to analyze what you're seeing and really focusing and honing in on what it is you're working on. This is obviously a longer process, but it can be helpful when you are solely focusing on a certain part of your delivery. Another way that you could do this is to blend a drill with a regular throw. So let's just say that you're working on your back leg load and you're doing a step back as your drill. You could do one throw with a step back and then do a regular throw immediately afterwards. So this is just gonna help blend the drill work to the mound and to your regular delivery that hopefully will just give you a little bit better transfer and carry over into your actual pitching delivery. Moving on to number three, command. So there's many ways to go about this and there's many areas that you could focus on, but in this type of bullpen, you are simply focusing on executing pitches. It will usually involve working on a specific pitch, either in zone or in a certain quadrant of the zone. One of my favorite ways to work on command and to uh, challenge yourself a little bit more is through differential balls, just to really challenge that feel and consistency at release with the different sizes or weights of the ball. You wanna make sure that you are doing something that you can track so that you can measure progress. So anytime it's execution, this isn't just you know a subjective type thing. We wanna be as objective as we can be to make sure that we are pushing ourselves enough and challenging ourselves enough while also making sure that we are actually getting better and moving in the right direction. Moving on to number four, game situations. So this type of bullpen is exactly as it sounds. You are simulating situations that you will face in the game. It could be doing something like a simulated at bat you could be working on a specific count, so maybe you really want to focus on 00 counts or 02 counts because you're struggling with finishing guys, so you're really honing in on your 02 breaking ball down or your 02 fastball up. You could also be working on holding runners or with a specific base runner type of situation. Maybe you want to practice, you know, there being a guy on second base or a guy on first and third. Those different types of situations that you're going to face in a game can be really good to work on putting yourself in those types of situations in a bullpen setting. And to make it even more realistic, you could have a batter stand in, and also you could do it on the game mound when it's permitted. Moving on to number five is a touch and feel. So with a touch and feel, not every bullpen needs to be super intense with every aspect being measured. There is a time and a place for touch and feels. This is typically performed at lower intensities and for fewer throws. So often guys will do a touch and feel the day before they pitch. Let's just say six to eight pitches just to get feel for the slope and to throw a couple of each pitch. There's no specific focus. It's more about the feel and just preparing yourself for whatever you have later that week. I don't think that these should be the main bulk of your bullpen work, but I do think that there is value in doing this in certain situations like the day before an outing. Some bullpen supplements and some things that you could add to all of these types of bullpens is time to the plate. So let's just say you need to work on your, you know, your, your delivery out of the stretch and you want to make sure you're a 1-3 to home rather than being a 1-6, you could add this to most of these types of bullpens to really push the needle forward on that. Another thing could be holding runners. Maybe it's changing your looks, changing how long you're holding the ball for because all those things are going to be more challenging when you're pitching compared to just doing a big long leg lift or pitching out the windup all the time. And then the third thing could be simply adding a pre-pitch routine. We wanna make sure that we have one and we make sure that we're working on it. And really with all of these scripts, you could be working on that and making sure that you have a consistent process in between pitches. So just to recap, the five bullpen, bullpen categories that you can consider doing are pitch design, mechanics, command, 
game situations, and lastly, a touch and feel. So that's all of them. There's, you know, there's obviously other iterations of all of these. The main thing is to make sure that you have a plan, you have a process in place, and a reason why you are focusing on those things. I would suggest not bouncing around from one to the next every week. You should have a fairly consistent process depending on what time of the year it is, whether it's off season or in season, and have a consistent process for at least the next four to six weeks of knowing what you need to work on and having a plan to attack it.